Now that we've introduced this whole concept of confidence intervals, let's go ahead and calculate out the scenario that we introduced. So once again, this is this tree super tallest that we found, a brand new tree. We've only we took a sample of 37. Uh, we know that their sample height, uh, the mean of their sample height is 400 feet. Let's put that in there, feet. Let's get some units up here, feet. And we'll put feet and feet here too. Okay, and suppose we are trying to approximate where the true population mean is. And we want to do it with a confidence level of 95%. Okay, so we have the things that we need in order to calculate out our confidence interval uh, when it's written kind of like this. Okay, so we are first going to assume that we know what this standard deviation is. Uh, of the true population. This is very similar to another tree in the forest, very similar you know, species or genus. And what we're going to do is we are going to calculate out now our margin of error and our standard error and we'll be able to figure out what we need. So first things first, uh, let's calculate out our standard error because it's a simple calculation and we already know uh, how to do this. We've been doing it before uh, since we've been using our central limit theorem. Okay, so our standard error is just going to be equal to sigma divided by the square root of n, which is just going to be equal to our 25 feet divided by uh, the square root of 37. And when you actually do the calculation for this guy, it's going to be 4.11. All right, so there's our standard error. Uh, we've got that part down. The next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out z. And before we figure out our z, remember the number of standard deviations away from the mean that we're willing to be, uh, that, that, that we want for our confidence interval, is we need to figure out what alpha, what alpha divided by 2 are. Okay. So we know that our confidence level is 95%, and we know that alpha is just going to be 1 minus the confidence level. Okay, So then alpha is just going to be equal to 1 minus 0.95, which leaves us with 0 0.05. Or, kind of seen from this graphic right here, we want to put uh, our the sum of the error, or the percent of the time that we're going to miss the com not the time the confidence interval misses mu, we're going to put half of it in the bottom and half of it in the top. So we're going to say that this guy, alpha divided by two, is just going to be equal to 0 0.025, or this 0 0.05 divided by two. So that gives us our alpha. Okay, so now. Let's go ahead and say we want to calculate out to this z of 0 0.025. Remember, this is alpha divided by 2. Just calculated it and I put it in here. Okay, in order to do this, we need to use our quantiles. And we know that we want this area to be uh, the area under the curve over here is 2.5%. The area under the curve over here is going to be 2.5% as well. All right, so in our quantiles, when it asks us for like the probability that we want to put in, we want to put in this 0.025. And we're going to leave the rest of it as the standard normal. We'll leave the mean as 0 and standard deviation as 1. And when we do that, I'll show how to do this in a software video. But when we do that, we get this uh, 1.96. Or it's basically back to our empirical rules two standard deviations away from the mean gives us 95% of the area under the curve. Okay, so now we just need to get our margin of error in there. And we can say our margin of error. That guy is just going to be equal to z alpha divided by 2, which equals 1.96 multiplied by 4.11. And that is going to equal 8.055. Okay, fantastic. 
So now that we have our margin of error, we can say where we think that the true mean is located with 95% confidence. So we need to put this in a very specific sentence. Uh, and there's lots of ways to like, correctly interpret this sentence, um, but there's also a lot of ways that we can write it incorrectly. Uh, we'll cover some of those concepts of like what's a good way to write it and what's a bad way to write it later. Uh, but just for right now, uh, we are, well, let's first just write up our confidence interval because we have it. Uh, we know that the confidence interval, and sometimes we put our confidence interval and we write like 0.95 or at the 95th uh, confidence level, 95% confidence level is going to be equal to, we've got our X bar, which is going to be 400 feet, plus or minus, uh, I'm just going to put up 8 feet just for convenience, 8 feet. So that's one way that we can write it. Another way that, that we could write this is that, You'll see it sometimes written like this, of our confidence interval is going to be 392, 408. So you'll see it written like that sometimes. Uh, another way that, that you can see it written, let's do just one more. We'll have mu like this, and we'll have 392 and 408. And you know, if you have like mu contained within, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can write it, but ultimately it's the same information in each of these. All right, so like I said, let's actually write our concluding statement. We need to get good at this because we're going to be writing basically these same concluding statements uh, for the rest of our class. All right, so we can say now that we are 95% confident that the true mean height of super tallest is somewhere between uh, 392 feet and 408 feet. OK, so we now have our confidence interval statement written out kind of in its entirety. And we are 95% confident that the true mean height, or sometimes I'll say true population mean height, I use those words to make sure that I'm talking about where I think that the mean is, that the true mean of mu is somewhere between 392 feet and 408 feet. Now, if you notice that our confidence interval actually didn't capture the true mean height. And you're like, well, what, did I just fail? It's like, no, we knew that it was going to do this occasionally. Now, it shouldn't happen most of the time. Most, like, if we were to do this, the same experiment 100 times, like we took samples of 37 trees over and over and over again, 95% of the time, they're actually going to be, um, they're going to capture the true population mean. And 5% of the time, we're going to miss it. And it's not that we did anything wrong. It's just that's what happens when we have random data sometimes and how we use our confidence intervals. Now, if that really bothers you, it's like, well, we could make our confidence interval smaller. And there, or sorry, we could make the confidence level smaller, right? Which would increase our confidence interval. Or we could decrease our sample size and we could increase our interval. And those, those are both kind of bad things to do. Um, because like we want it to be as accurate as possible. Uh, so anyways, there's, there's lots of things that we could do. And once again, if we increase our confidence level, I mean, 
I guess that's actually, you know, it can be a good thing, but it comes at the cost of widening out the interval. Um, and if we also, if we decrease our sample size, we can make our interval wider, but if you can get more data, you always want um, more data. So we just, we have to be willing to be wrong sometimes, and that's just a fact about dealing with our confidence intervals and kind of the fact of, of statistics. But this is how we handle it if we know what the true population standard deviation is. Now, we might not know it. In fact, most of the time we don't know what that value is. Uh, and there's another equation that we can use for our margin of error. We just need to adjust how we do our margin of error. And besides that, the principles all remain the same.